Hi, Mariana. Can you share a bit more about uh, the work you are doing uh, at the House of Arsis? Hello, of course. Uh, the House of Arsis is uh, one of uh, the accommodation facilities uh, that the Greek NGO Arsis is uh, uh, operating in Greece. Um, uh, it's a center for unaccompanied minors, girls from uh, uh, boys up to 12 years old and girls up to 18. Uh -huh. And uh, within the last 10 years, it has provided care and support to more than 500 children. Okay. Um, most of them uh, uh, returned safely to their families and relatives. Um, some of them were supported to their transition to adulthood. A small number of children were placed in foster families and less of them were referred to other accommodation facilities. Okay, perfect. That uh, sounds pretty nice. And uh, how long are you doing this job already? Uh, the last 12 years. Okay, perfect. And always in, in the same uh, function or role, or did you have different roles within uh, House of Access? Well, uh, when you work in uh, in shelters, uh, you know, you see that uh, you don't have a specific role. Of course, I'm the coordinator of the shelter, but at the same time, I, I provide uh, my uh, help to anything that has to do with the daily operation. So uh, I'm a little bit of a caregiver and I'm a little bit of a psychologist and I do whatever I have to do in order uh, for the operation to be uh, the best we can for all the children. So, uh, yeah, I'm a social worker at the same time, but, um, you know, I can do whatever it takes uh, for the good operation of the center. Sounds really impressive. So uh, we learned the, the main target group are minors, but what ages uh, do they typically have the, the minors uh, in the House of Arsis? The age? Yes. Yeah, uh, there are uh, boys and girls from zero to 12, and then we have girls from uh, 12 to 18 years old. Okay. Yeah. And which are the main nationalities of the children living in the House of Arsis? And are there any problems or challenges they might face uh, in the relationship uh, due to their origin? Well, uh, the majority of the children right now in Greece in general uh, come from Afghanistan, uh, um, Pakistan, Somalia, um, and Iran, uh, Iraq. But uh, in the House of Arsis right now, uh, most of the children come from Iraq, okay. Afghanistan, Iran, Pakistan. We have um, one girl from Yemen and two okay. from Ukraine. Okay, of Ukraine as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, which? Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, the um, even though most of the children, the majority of them are uh, quite young. So imagine that um, uh, most of them are under twelve years old. Mm. Uh, what we have seen with the nationalities, and it's important to, you know, to, to point out, is that um, even though they are really young, um, they tend to, um, you know, to keep uh, uh, the characteristics of, uh, uh, of their countries, of their tribes, of their uh, tradition and their cultures. Yeah. So we have seen many times, you know, disagreements between them in cases on matters of uh, faith, for example, uh, between uh, um, uh, Muslims and Yazidis. Okay. Or we have seen uh, uh, having differences and uh, arguments um, uh, in issues related to origin and politics, for example, between uh, uh, Afghans and Arabs. Okay. You know, children tend to repeat what they have heard from their parents. Mm. And that's always something that uh, you know professionals should take into consideration. So it's really important to understand and um, have great knowledge of their background. Uh -huh. So it is important for us, you know, to um, to train our staff in the background of the children, you uh -huh. know, in order to understand their culture, uh, know what their faith is. Uh, know the uh, specific characteristics of uh, the countries of origin, uh -huh. because this will help. In, um, in everyday um, uh, operation and, of course, in taking care of the children. Yeah, definitely. So um, which services exactly does the House of Arsis offer to those minors? Um, we, we have uh, uh, the obligation uh, of, um, uh, of a parent, let's say. So mm -hmm. um, despite the basic needs that we have to, of course, uh, cover, 
um, which I will not mention because they're basic needs and mm -hmm. you know, they, they have to be guaranteed. Yes. Um, so we have um, uh, the medical, legal services, psychosocial, educational, recreational, um, mm -hmm. and um, whatever a child needs um, in order to have um, uh, a, a complete state of care. Yeah, definitely. So, and that's the, when the children arrive to the house of Arsis, what exactly happens when they just arrive there? Um, usually we know that a child will come. Okay. We only know the age and the gender um, and uh, the country of origin. This is uh -huh. the, the only information that we have. Uh -huh. So the first person that will, um, uh, will, will welcome the child is uh, the person of reference. So it, in most cases, it, it is a social worker along with a psychologist, the interpreter, of course, and the caregiver. Okay. So it's a small group, you know, that uh, actually does the reception of the child. Uh -huh. um, and uh, um, the main idea is that we want to um, make him or her, you know, feel uh, safe. This is the, the idea, you know, at, at least the first uh, uh, 24 hours. So we do give a welcome kit and we do some administrative actions that have to take place, you know, it's uh -huh. mandatory. Uh -huh. um, but um, what we do is prioritize what is, uh, if we have an emergency, let's say a health issue, or uh, if they're really young, we need to contact the family immediately. Uh -huh. So this will make the children feel better. And of course, the family will feel safe that the child is under uh, protection and care of people that they have names huh? and yeah, faces. Yeah. So it is important uh, uh, to do that in the first uh, uh, few hours. And then we proceed with just a brief information because we don't want to make them um uh, you know we don't we don't we don't want to give them uh too much information mm -hmm. okay just to get to know the other children get to know the environment the um, uh, his or her room mm -hmm. uh simple stuff yeah yeah so it's not too overwhelming for them and the, at the beginning when they arrive it's just like the basic things uh and how long do those children usually stay with you um it depends mm -hmm. uh, mostly on the legal case yeah so this is what will make the difference if we are talking about family unification let's say dublin procedure takes uh, like uh, from six months to ten months okay uh for all the procedure to uh um to be over but if we are talking about separated children for example children that uh came here with uh, parents or relatives and they had to be taken away for really serious reasons. Uh -huh. That is another story. It's quite difficult. Uh, yeah. and so it takes more time to evaluate the whole and assess the whole uh, uh, case and find what is actually the best interest of the child. Uh -huh. And um, then um, there are so many people involved in these cases. So uh, it has to do with the good understanding of everyone. Uh, uh -huh. And that has to do with time as well huh? yeah, so definitely it differs but um if we are talking about a placement in foster family then we're talking from six to nine months yes and then it's all the monitoring so since the children let's say that yeah we give basic information the first 24 hours but then there are so many things that have to be done uh -huh. um uh, and have to be done in a short period of time because we don't want them to stay for a long, uh, for a long uh -huh. period of time. Uh, yeah. it's, it's not good for them. Um, yeah. So we are trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you try to let them stay less than a year, but are there cases where there are children who are staying more than one year, two years uh, at the house of ours? Or is this like uh, not really the case? We are trying to uh, uh, make, uh, uh, we are trying to keep it uh, less than a year. Okay. And in most cases, we succeed to keep it under uh, one uh -huh. year. Um, uh, but uh, there are uh, specific cases that, um, yeah, can take longer than that. Uh -huh. uh, but um, yeah, it's um, it's not the majority. It's okay. one or two in the twenty-one children that we host. Uh, you know, yeah. um, 
this is our capacity is 21 i don't know if i said that no that's okay that now we know <laughs> um okay but then uh, it's more an exception that children stay uh, a longer time and, and most of them like you said would uh, return to their family or, or find a, a foster family within a year so that's i think uh, already a nice uh, thing of how survivors is to to succeed in so um another thing i wanted to ask you is that child protection is uh, one of the three pillars of our sis um, how does um, House of Arsis plays a role within uh, child protection? Well, child protection is at the core of our work. Our work eh? is what we do actually in the House of Arsis. Okay. So, um, uh, what we have decided throughout the years and the fifteen years of operation is that uh, we. Uh, decided to co-shape everything along with the children. Uh -huh. So um, that's one thing that has helped a lot uh, uh -huh. uh, to create a safe environment, um, a, an environment that, that children uh, understand that their opinion uh -huh. and their participation is respected. So uh -huh. their, their rights are respected. Yeah. So uh, the main idea is that we want to uh, give uh, protection. We want to... Um, uh, to make sure that their rights are guaranteed, not only mm -hmm. inside the house, but outside as well. Yeah. And um, child protection is uh, actually what we do. Perfect. Okay. So do you feel there are also like challenges for those children um, at House of Arsis related to child protection in or outside the house? Um, well, uh, challenges are it can be can be many challenges uh, um, that have to do uh, with uh, their legal cases, for example. You know, uh -huh. we have serious issues with uh, uh, how uh, the cases are processed in uh, in the legal framework of Greece. Yeah. Again, uh, we have uh, we face great challenges with the children that actually um, are about to become eighteen. Uh -huh. but, uh, 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 there is uh, no protection after eighteen. So um, there are plenty of um, uh, the, the main framework of uh, Greece is a challenge, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. Because um, there are not that many services in order to um, assist the children, not only while they stay in the house, mm -hmm. but you know when they are making their first steps as adults. So of course there are challenges, and we are trying really hard, and we advocate a lot in order mm -hmm. to make uh, to bring changes in. Uh, not only for the house or for the other centers, but from the the, the, the general framework. Okay. Um, but uh, what uh, I, I can say more certain for uh, more, more specific, sorry, for the uh -huh. children, is that um, for those who work with children, it's um, really important to understand that uh, they take part in life changing decisions. Yeah. And that is always a great challenge because it's a great amount of liability and uh, um, um, for a professional, it's always something that has to take into account. Yeah, and yeah. This is why we need teams and why we need uh, uh, multidisciplinary teams. Yeah. Because it's easier to face challenges, it's easier to solve any problems. And there are many that have to do with uh, how you can assist, how you can support an unaccompanied minor, at least in this. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. It, it sounds very logical when you say it like this. So maybe to conclude this interview, do you have any tips or lessons learned from your uh, experience at House of Arsis that you can share with other youth workers or social workers uh, when working in the context of uh, temporary stay of minors? Yeah, what I would suggest to any person that will work with uh... Uh, with the children is um, to pay attention to um, the specific needs of uh, the child. Uh, mm -hmm. We always need to, you know, give time and try to build trust in relationship with them. Uh, and we, we, I also know that children uh, uh, respond better to people who are who show empathy, who mm -hmm. truly listen to their needs, to those who put limits mm -hmm. <laughs> and give orientation. Yeah. Um, to those who do not act as saviors or experts. Yeah. Okay. Um, but those who actually respect 
the experiences of the children. And in most cases, you know that um, they are really, really who oh, uh, difficult situations. Uh, oh, yeah. They have faced so many difficult situations and um, it's of great importance. This is why I said before that it's of great importance to to know, to, to have knowledge of uh, the background of the children, yeah. to understand uh, their culture, um, where they come from, uh, because at least the young ones integrate really fast. And that is something that we have to keep in mind, mm -hmm. because if we don't have a good balance, they, it's, it's a risk. They can lose their identity. So mm -hmm. people who work with children, you know, they are... Um, for me, it's um, they, they need to uh, uh, show empathy, be yeah, there, yeah. give compassion and care, yeah. and respect yeah. the limits, and yeah. um, you know, uh, get ready to uh, to face many challenges, but at the same time, uh, uh, find a way to um, ask for help and supervision when mm -hmm. they need, you know, because they will make mistakes. I have made so many mistakes. I have <laughs> learned from them yeah. you know, and I became a lot better. Yeah, definitely. So that's a really nice tip. Thank you, uh, Mariana, for uh, sharing your experience with uh, uh, from your job at House of Arsis. I think it will be really helpful for uh, other people out there as well. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs>